Uh, good afternoon, dear participants. Um, thank you for rejoining uh, for this afternoon's sessions. Uh, we will invite um, Dr. Ihab Janad to uh, continue and talk about deficit and supplementary irrigation this afternoon. Um, it looks like uh, Dr. Waba is not online. Um, hopefully he'll come online later and uh, join in our conversation. I have posted a second uh, opinion survey, which I invite all of you to join in our conversation. I've posted the link both to the chat box as well as the WhatsApp group. And the survey will conclude at about 15 minutes after the end of next training session. So with that, uh, if Dr. Ihab is online, um, please proceed. Hi, everybody again. I will continue talking about uh, using aqua crop for irrigation management. I, I guess I managed uh, uh, to show you uh, aqua crop model uh, running and using for full irrigation and uh, for deficit irrigation. So maybe I will just uh, demonstrate how we can use the model. Can you see now? Yes, your model is showing. Thank you. OK, so uh, we start uh, the model. And this uh, is the main uh, screen for aqua crop model. So we have different icon. One icon for the climate uh, data. Icon for the crop. So in the crop, we input the crop characteristic. Then we have icon for uh, irrigation, icon for field management information, icon for soil profile, for groundwater, for simulation period, initial condition, and then we can run the model. So uh, I will go through an example. And this for real data, we get it during one of the training course from uh, city of Jenin in uh, Palestine. So I will start by getting the climate data. I click on the climate, then select file I already prepared for Jenin. And I can show you what this file include. Display. So first we have the uh, rainfall data. And as I mentioned before, this must be when we work in aqua crop, the rainfall data must be daily, daily value. We cannot use uh, weekly or monthly or yearly because I mean the rainfall will change the soil moisture and the water balance, daily water balance, aqua crop perform daily water balance. Then here we have the ET0. And for ET0, we have two options. Either you can, if you have ET0, calculate from outside source. So you can input your ET0 value. Or you can ask Aquacrop to, cal to uh, calculate ET0 using Benman Montes based on the parameter I mentioned. And the minimum data you need uh, to calculate it is zero is T max and T minimum. And here's the temperature. And temperature data uh, you need it not only to calculate it is zero, but also it determine the uh, different uh, growing stage. And here you can input the CO2, and this is uh, default value. If you have a climate change scenario, you can change this file uh, to the scenario you want. For uh, crop, in my case, I will run the simulation for uh, potato crop engineering. So I already have the 
file. It asked me for the planting date. My case is 1st of March, the planting date. And let me show you some information. In the crop file. So first here we have two mode. Either, either will run on calendar days. Calendar days is mean the days after planting or growing degree days. Always, I mean, we use the calendar day only when we input or create the file. But when we run the model, always we run for the growing degree days. For develop, crop development, here they ask we need to input the uh, method of planting. If it, it is direct sowing or transplanting, depend on the crop. And uh, we input some information about the plant density. We need to know this information. And uh, the maximum can be covered. In this case, 92 percent, the percentage of crop cover at the mid season. We need to input the maximum effective root depth. This is the maximum. For production, there is very important information we need to input what we call this very important for aqua crop, the harvesting index. I don't know if you are familiar with this term. People uh, who work with the crop, they know uh, what mean harvesting index, but it is the total biomass over the weight the weight of the yield divided by the total biomass of the crop. If we're talking about wheat, will be the weight of the uh, uh, the seed or the we get from the wheat. I mean, divide by everything, the whole biomass. For potato, is the weight of potato fruit divided by the whole weight of uh, potato and leaf and all biomass. The information we need for the crop, we need, we need detailed information about the phenology, time for plant to uh, recover, time to maximum canopy cover, time to maximum rooting depths, time to start canopy census, time to maturity, time to start yield formation. So this is very important information and we need to get this from the field. I mean, there is no reference we can get this information because this uh, value, it depends on the location because it's directly related to the temperature and it also depends on the variety. So the plant phenology, we need to get it from our site for our crop, exactly. So this is the main data we need for the crop. For irrigation, as I mentioned, we have two options. Either if we have uh, already decided schedule, we can input our schedule, or we can ask aqua crop to generate irrigation schedule. I will do two run. First, I will run uh, the model for uh, already decided irrigation schedule. So I select one of the one irrigation uh, uh, irrigation schedule I have. I can show you. So here for irrigation method, 
in my case, I select the sprinkler irrigation. And here you can see the default value for the percentage of soil surface weighted is 100% for a sprinkler. If this was not correct, I can change it. I can change this value. So as I mentioned, I select the irrigation method. And because they need to know how much the uh, area of the weighted surface, because based on this, it will calculate the amount of evaporation from soil. And then we can see here the irrigation event. And we, I have uh, three information. The day of irrigation, for example, here 13, this 13 day after planting. And the amount of irrigation for first event 18 millimeter and the EC if I have the value of EC. So here you can see the whole oil irrigation event. So it's already decided. This is not generated by aqua crop. Then I input the field management data. And this include information about soil fertility. Do we have uh, optimal fertility, near optimal or poor? In this case, it was near optimal. Here we input information about mulching, if we have mulch. Do we have plastic mulch, organic mulch? or we don't have much. In this case, in our case, we don't have much. We select none. Then here we input information about the field. Is there runoff in the field or we don't have runoff? We Here we have a sprinkler system, so we select we don't have effect of surface runoff. In field management also, we input information about weed management, weed management. Because I mean, we share the plant with water consumption and uh, nutrition. So we input the percentage of the wheat in the field. In this case, we input 5%. Uh, so depend on our field, we input the percentage of wheat in the field. So we have to input information about wheat. For soil, I select my uh, uh, soil file. Let me show you what. Uh, here I have uh, information about soil characteristic. First, we have the number of soil horizon. In my case, in this example, we have two horizon. First, horizon. The texture is silty clay loam. Second horizon is loam soil. Then for every horizon, we have the thickness, wilting point. We need, I mean, to have this information. Field capacity, saturated soil moisture content, and hydraulic, saturated hydraulic conductivity. So we need to have this information. This is very important because based on this, the model will calculate the total available water. So this is for first horizon and this for information for the second horizon. So this is the information I need for the soil. I'm not going in detail because uh, just we want to have a general idea. For groundwater, of course, I mean, when you have high groundwater level, then you will have capillary rise and water uh, will come to the uh, root zone from groundwater. If the groundwater level uh, was more than four meters far 
from the our uh, bottom, the bottom of the uh, root zone, then we don't input information for groundwater because the groundwater will not uh, uh, contribute to the soil moisture content. If the groundwater level was uh, clo closer than four meter to the root zone, then we have to input information. Our case was uh, more than four millimeters, so we would not include any information. Initial condition, very important. When I do the planting, what was the moisture content during the planting? This is what we mean by the initial condition. So usually for uh, irrigated crop, the initial condition uh, most of the time will be about field, soil moisture will be about field capacity. We input. So I select that this moisture content at the planting, it is field capacity. If it was different, I can change. So I input most of the necessary information. I can do the run now. Of course, there is a project for, uh, I'm not going for project and field data because uh, this uh, detail, I use a project when I have to run for more than one year. In my case, I will run only for one year. So I will do the run. So this is a window. And I can see, run, do the whole run at one time or I run every 10 days. So I start. So this graph at the top it shows the amount of transpiration. The graph here shows the crop cover, and the graph below shows the moisture content in the root zone. This is the end of simulation. So here we have the dry yield. And we can see here is about 8.5 ton per hectare the yield. And this uh, for potato fruit, for biomass, 10.66 ton per hectare. And we can see this is the moisture content. This blue line here shows the field capacity. So I start, the moisture content start at field capacity. Then it decreases. So we add irrigation. We went back to field capacity again. Moisture is decreased. So we add irrigation back to field capacity. Again, moisture content decreases. So we see by the end of the season here, moisture content is far from field capacity. And so here, the number in red color shows that we have stress, water stress. Because as I mentioned here, I input irrigation schedule not generated by the aqua crop. So this schedule does not provide the optimal uh, need for the crop, the full irrigation requirement. So later I will show I, how I can use this to run different scenario for irrigation scheduling and see how this will affect the yield. So, this example on using aqua crop uh, for uh, with uh, already exist irrigation schedule. Let me show you how I can 
ask the aqua crop to generate irrigation schedule based on the criteria I will provide. So I will go to irrigation icon here. Select create and I will go to create create. Uh, here I will select generation. I will select generation of irrigation schedule. Generation of irrigation schedule. Then create irrigation file. Ask me for the name. Full irrigation. The method sprinkler irrigation. Time here. I need to input the time and depth criteria. As I mentioned before, the time criteria defines the time for irrigation. And I have several options either fixed irrigation, allowable depletion in millimeter, allowable depletion in percentage of readily available water. So I will take this option, I will define the allowable depletion as percentage of readily available water, and I will put 50% here. This means, what this means, when they, the plant consumes 50% of readily available water, we should irrigate. So, I mean, we start at field capacity. Every day, the plant will consume from the soil moisture content. And the aqua crop, they calculate the soil moisture by the end of every day. When the soil moisture equal to critical, when or uh, when the plant consumed 50% of readily available water, then we'll have an irrigation. Then to define the amount of irrigation, I will define that the we need to add irrigation water to return the soil moisture to field capacity. So I, if I put zero here, the aqua crab will understand that I need to add water to return the soil moisture to field capacity. So in this case, I will generate full schedule. I will not have a stress because the plant will consume every, only 50% of readily available water. This uh, because uh, potato sensitive to uh, water stress. If I put 100%, I will be still okay. We can try different criteria. The difference between 50 and 100 only when I use 100, then the interval between the irrigation bed will be larger and the amount of irrigation will be larger. So I will, after I put my criteria, I will click on create. So I have now a new irrigation schedule. I will do, I have all the information from before. I will do the run. See, we can see that the yield increase to 9.3 ton per hectare. Of course, we have some stress, but not water stress here because we have the weed. We have 5% reduction uh, because of the weed and because the fertility not optimal, we have 18%. So this stress not from water, but we don't have any water stress. We can see the irrigation schedule. We see here, this show you the irrigation 
event applied, and this was decided by the model, the time of irrigation based on the criteria and the amount of irrigation. You can see also table, not only graph. This irrigation event here, this table show exactly the date, the date uh, for irrigation event when I need to irrigate, and this is the amount of irrigation in millimeter. For always in aquacrab, we get the net irrigation, not the gross application. So in order to get the gross irrigation, we need to divide by the irrigation efficiency, depend on our irrigation method. This is very important to remember. So this for engineer will be very good information to have this irrigation schedule. Uh, Aquacrab show you the whole all component for water balance. You can see here, you can see amount of evaporation during the season. Here we have 179 millimeter. The transpiration, 393 millimeter. The runoff, of course, is very minimal because we have a sprinkler system and we have optimal irrigation. The amount of water infiltrated from the surface. The drained water, also we have minimum amount, very small amount, because we don't allow soil moisture to increase above field capacity, so we don't have deep percolation. We don't have capillary rise because our groundwater is far. And here we have the amount of rain during the growing season. And the amount of irrigation, total irrigation was 539 millimeter. We can also see the soil moisture in the profile. So a lot of information also text file generated, we can get the information and put it in Excel. So just I, I wanted to show you example, detailed example, how can we use aquacrab either for uh, already exist uh, irrigation schedule or to generate irrigation schedule based on criteria we would. So uh, maybe I will uh, just stop a little bit before I proceed to get the question. Hello, Marley. Marley. Do we have any question? Okay, Ali. Ali from Sudan, I guess. Thank you so much, Dr. Wahab, uh, for uh, explaining the use of uh, Aquacrop. So uh, I have a question concerning the uh, period of historical data. So what is the minimum period of uh, historical data is ne needed to generate a reliable output? Thank you so much. OK. Uh, historical data, I need it only to do the calibration, the model calibration. So I prefer to have at least 10 years if we have the data for uh, climate, weather data, 
and for the yield. Uh, after we do the calibration, so we need only to have the data for the year I want to run the simulation for. Thank you so much. Okay. Do we have an, another question? Well, it does not look like it from the chat or anything, so I'll please proceed. Okay. OK. Now uh, we'll talk about using aqua crop for deficit irrigation. Deficit irrigation uh, means that we let the plant subject to water stress either during certain period or during the whole uh, growing season. And uh, sometimes we have to, uh, to do that in order to save water. One of the advantage of aquacrab is that we can try different scenario for uh, irrigation amount and timing and we see how much they yield for every scenario. Then maybe we can decide we can allow to reduce our irrigation by certain amount by 20 or 30 percent if this will not affect the yield too much. So this in this in this situation, aquacrab is used is very good planning tool. And so you can advise the farmer how much water they can apply with acceptance for certain certain percentage in the yield of the crop. Usually, I mean Many in many research center, they do field experiment. It might last for two or three years on deficit irrigation. And uh, they try different irrigation scenario and see the yield every year. Then they make decision how much to apply. So in this case, aqua crab will be alternative. Instead of taking several years to know this result, you can use the simulation to see this relation between applied water and the obtained yield by the end of the season. Of course, this does not mean there is no need at all to the field data. Because as I mentioned, definitely I need to do calibration to the model. And without calibration, might be the result very far from reality. So let me show you. I will go uh, through aquacrab model again and show you. Uh, how we can run different scenario. Usually, first we run aqua crop to do full irrigation schedule. Then we take percentage from the full irrigation, so we keep the time the timing the same for full irrigation, but we reduce the amount in each irrigation. 
we just have to, uh, could, I mean, we don't have to fix the timing, but this will be easy way to do. You can change the timing and the amount. You can see the table here. This table, this for the same example, I was running for uh, Jinin, uh, potato crop in Jinin in Palestine. You see this first column was for generated by aqua crop for full irrigation. So this is the irrigation time, date after planting, and this is the amount of irrigation. In each event. Then I put five scenarios for different irrigation. One, two, three, four, five. Five scenario. First scenario, I will use 80% of full irrigation. Second scenario, 70% of full irrigation. Then 60%. 50% and 40%. So, we have different scenario. And I will see how the reduction in the amount of irrigation will affect the aid. So, I prepared a irrigation file for every scenario. And you can see at the bottom, I don't know, can you see it? For uh, full irrigation, the amount is 504. For 80%, 405. Uh, and for 40%, only about 200 millimeters. So this is uh, again back to aqua crop model. For the same example, I will just change. So let's see for full irrigation, I will do the run again. And please write the number with me. So for uh, Full irrigation, in this case, we have the irrigation amount 539 millimeter and the yield 9.3 ton per hectare. Just I would like to mention here that the yield we get from aquacrop is the dry yield always, the dry yield. So when the one we get in the market is the fresh yield. So we need to convert this to dry yield. Okay, so this was for full irrigation. Now I will select, I already prepared different scenario. So here we have the 80% scenario. So now I have my file for 80% from full irrigation. I will do the run. We see that uh, here the amount of irrigation now is for or five, and the yield is 8.4. So we have reduction. The yield was reduced from 9.3 to 8.5, sorry, 
five. This second scenario for seventy percent. I will do the run. So the amount of irrigation, 354, and the yield, 7.12. OK, for 60, you can see here, let me uh, show you, for crop cover, the gray color means this is the optimal crop cover, optimal crop cover. And the green, this is the simulated, simulated crop cover. And we can see here, we don't have full cover because of the water stress. because of water stress. And we can see the red number here indicates that we have canopy expansion stress and stomatal closer stress. And more important, we can see the here in the soil moisture, we are near the wilting point, above the wilting point, but not far from wilting point. So, the amount of irrigation, straw five, and the yield for ton, and so on. I can continue. So, as you can see here, you found this relation between the amount of applied water and the yield. So for the first scenario, I mean, you can save 20% of irrigation water, about 130 millimeter. This means 1300 cubic meter per hectare. And the crop yield reduced only by no, half ton or less, uh, yeah, about half ton per hectare. Maybe I can show you the table. This for a different run, and you can see here, this table shows the result of different scenario. So for 80% scenario, I can save 20% of the irrigation water, and the yield reduce only 5%. Water amount of water reduced by 30 percent, the yield is reduced by 13 percent. If the amount of water reduced by 50 percent, the yield reduced by 34 percent. I guess this is very important result. Our area is very scarce of water, so we might, I mean, it is okay. I can accept 5% reduction in yield, but I can save 20% of irrigation amount. So, aquacrop is very good tool, can help you 
in making the decision, I mean. And you can try different scenario, different irrigation time, different irrigation amount, and see how this will impact uh, the yield. When uh, we have very good calibration, so we guarantee that we'll have very good output from aqua crop. So this is what I want to talk about the deficit irrigation. So maybe I can take some question before I proceed. Mohammed. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Iyad, for your excellent presentation about how we can use aqua crop for irrigation scheduling and uh, to apply deficit irrigation. In fact, uh, deficit irrigation is very important in our cases, especially under water scarcity condition. Uh, we need it urgently to, 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 to have equity between uh, the users and also to try to maximize uh, the use of each drop of water. Uh, just uh, I would like to, to add to, you, you mentioned that we can reduce the total amount but by uh, 20 or 30 or 40 percent. Also, the most important to when during the problem season to apply the reduction. This is very important also to keep for the maximum uh, crop yield to which we, we would like to have it. So, uh, during the, the season, we did uh, such uh, an experimental field before, and we found uh, at the end of the cropping season, it is a good time to, to have this reduction without a minimum effect on the final crop yield. At the same time, for the equity distribution for the farmer, uh, if we have a reduction in the available water resources, so we have to, to distribute the water in, in a way of uh, equity between all the farmers. So it is a balance between the available resources and the maximum yields we can have. This is very important for the planning uh, based on the actual situation of uh, availability of water resources. Um, thank you, Dr. Waba, for those insightful comments. Um, we have a couple of questions. Um, one question that was received earlier was from a participant inquiring whether or not aqua crop can be used to determine water distribution uniformity. And then we have a second question about what the difference, uh, we'll proceed with that, and then we have two more questions that are coming. Uh, Dr. Ihab, you're muted currently, so we cannot hear you. Okay. Aqua crab is applied at point level, not on the field level. So, uh, I mean, as I mentioned, nothing to do with irrigation efficiency and uniformity. So, because it works at point level. So, all the irrigation amount we get from aqua crab is net irrigation. And we have to get our efficiency from outside and divide this value by the efficiency to get the total amount of irrigation we need uh, to apply. So this for uh, regarding the first question. Um, and then we have a second question. What is the difference between dry and fresh yield? Yeah, I mean, the dry yield is uh, uh, the weight or the yield without moisture content. I mean, so we dry the crop and we get the weight. And uh, of course, uh, there is some reference you can get for every crop, the ratio of a dry yield from the fresh yield. And I will uh, recommend uh, irrigation and drainage paper 66, irrigation range power 66, 
it has uh, the percentage of dry to fresh for different crop. And uh, so you need to know this information, especially when you do the calibration, because usually the value we get for the yield to be fresh. So you have to convert this to dry before you compare to the yield you get from aqua crab. Okay. Thank you. The next question we have is uh, considering the amount of the considering the new irrigation schemes, how can we benefit from aqua crop? Can you repeat, uh, Marlene? Yes, um, certainly. Considering the new irrigation schemes, how can we benefit from aqua crop? Uh, you mean? Sorry. You mean, I mean, if you have a new irrigation project and how we can yes. use how, how we can use aqua crop in planning our irrigation in the new field. Is this what uh, your question? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I guess in this case, we can use aqua crop to generate irrigation schedule. So we, we can plan in our new field when to irrigate and how much water we need to apply. So definitely we can use aqua crop to, uh, to estimate what the crop water requirement, how much water we need to our crop. If we have different crop in our field, so we can use aqua crop to make estimation for a crop requirement for different crop and to do irrigation scheduling for different crop using the local data for weather and soil information and crop characteristic. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have several more questions that are coming. Um, I know you've answered this earlier, but perhaps this participant um, uh, missed it, and it's definitely valid to emphasize again. Um, what is the relationship between aqua crop and crop what? Yes, this is all, always people mix between uh, the two uh, model, and there's big, big difference between uh, the two model. I mean, crop what also do uh, water balance, need soil information, but not detail uh, for a crop. It need only the crop coefficient. Uh, there is no detail about the phenology. Uh, the crop what does not give you, even they have very approximate relation between the applied water and the yield, but it's very weak. I mean, in this in, uh, aqua crop, it mainly designed to do this relation between yield and uh, applied water, which is, this is, I mean, the main thing, I mean, we do here. Uh, crop what we cannot use to assess the impact of climate change on yield, while in uh, uh, aqua crop, uh, in aqua crop, we can make such assessment. Uh, in aqua crop, we know in detail the different the amount of transpiration, evaporation, drained water, deep, uh, deep uh, percolation, and uh, we do this balance on daily basis. Crop what I mean, I believe it run on monthly data, not on daily data. Then they do extrapolation or interpolation to get the daily value. So aqua crop, more detail, but let me tell you this. And myself, myself, I still use crop uh, what again, especially in case if uh, I need to know the crop water requirement. So it will be good to use uh, crop what, especially if you have the crop coefficient. But if you need detailed information about the yield and impact of water stress on yield, definitely aqua crop will be a better option. 
Uh, thank you again. Back to aqua crop. Um, so do we have to deal with each crop individually or can we analyze the system collectively with multiple crops? No, we can. We can run only for one crop uh, it's, uh, at one time. Because I, as I mentioned, it's, uh, to work at point. But there is tool in aqua crop, if we have different scenario, we can run more than one scenario at the same time. OK, thank you. And is aqua crop uh, better suited for certain crops better than others? Specifically, is crop bot uh, very valid for rice crops or um, are other crops recommended to utilize with better results? Yeah. Is this a question? Does the aqua crop is good for study water balance for rice? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yes for rice, but as well in that context, um, is it better for other uh, uh, crops as well? Yeah, D definitely. I mean, aqua crab give water balance on daily basis, and aqua crab can be used for uh, rice crab, and is used actually in uh, several African city. I mean, there is several study you can find aqua crab is used for uh, irrigation scheduling, scheduling for uh, rice crop. And I mentioned one of the option when you need to schedule irrigation, the water minimum water depth in the basin. I mean, you would and this specifically for rice crop. You can you can you can I mean Google there is several publication about uh, using aqua crop for rice. Um, and fo a follow up question to that is further to the explanation between aqua crop and crop watt. What is the preferred method for water requirement calculations in a new irrigation development? Yes. Yeah. For for a new scheme, maybe I will use crop watt because maybe at that time we will not have detail about the crop phenology, the one we need for aqua crop. And uh, so for for calculating or estimating crop water requirement, crop what will be good tool, I mean, and give the information we need at that stage. Aqua crop will be better when you do the irrigation scheduling after you plant your crop, will, will work better than crop what. Let me say this. Crop, I mean, let's see. I plant this year, and I have uh, we have this question. I mean, in real time from uh, several research center. If I plant cotton this year, and I want to schedule use aqu uh, aqua crop to schedule irrigation for for cotton for this year. So we don't have weather data for the whole uh, season yet. So aqua crop can be used to do real time simulation. We can input the weather data day by day and uh, monitor the water balance and see the soil moisture content and make decision on the irrigation time and the irrigation amount. A crop, what I believe cannot be used to do real time simulation. You can, you, you can, of course, you can use the crop to do irrigation schedule, but this be will for information either for historical information or average information to get an idea, to get an idea about general idea about the irrigation schedule in that area, but cannot be used to do uh, real time simulation. This is very important difference between the two model. And of course, you, ca you cannot use to develop scenario, deficit irrigation scenario for different irrigation amount. And there is, of course, crop what give you the yield using equation, I guess, in publication 
maybe 66, I'm not sure. Our situation here, I mean, the stress, I mean, the water stress, the cold stress, it is uh, done in more accurate method. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any further questions from participants? Um, it, it appears not, so you may proceed. And maybe you still have uh, about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, and I will talk about very important use for uh, aqua crop, for rain feed crop, and uh, for supplementary, how you can use for uh, supplementary irrigation. And I will uh, go through an example here. I will start new aquacra. So I will, my example here, I will uh, run aquacra for uh, rain feed wheat. And this example will be from uh, Lebanon. In Tal Amara in Lebanon, uh, they have very good rainfall. So they have rain feed. Uh, wheat. First, I will input the climate and this Tal Amara. So here we can see the rainfall. And the crop will be Lebanon wheat. And the planting date is 1st of December. Let me go a little bit to the crop file just to show you some information. So the calendar, this information we need for the crop. So for wheat, we need the time to emergence. This was 19 days. Maximum canopy cover we get 162. Maximum root depth at 162 days after planting. Maturity or uh, cannabis start cannabis sensors 175. Maturity 191. So this is the length of the growing season. Flowering 148. And the root depth, the maximum root depth is 70 centimeter. We get from the field. The harvesting index, I said this very important. And this, in this case, was 48%. And this, the percentage of the seed we get divided by the total biomass above the ground surface. This percentage in wheat, it depends from variety to variety. In this case, it was 48 percent. This is very important information. Another important we need, aqua crop is separate between C3 crop and C4 crop. Only people who work with the crop, they know the difference. This is something to do with uh, uh, CO2. Most of our crop are C3. Only uh, there is other crop like maize uh, and similar crop that would be C4. Would be, so we need to define our crop if it is C3 or C4. And let me give you this advice. When you need to run aqua crop for certain crop, 
in the database when you download Aquacrub from uh, FAO site, in the database they have file for different crop. So always start from already existing file for the crop you want to study. For example, if you want to run simulation for maize, so open existed file crop file for maize. Then adjust the parameter in this file according to your data. But in this case, you guarantee all conservative parameter for maize will be correct. If you start aqua crop blank one, so you might miss some of the information. So the best way to start uh, to start from existing uh, file for a crop similar to your crop. So for irrigation, I said here we run for rain feed, so we don't input irrigation file and said here we don't rain feed cropping. So we, I don't input irrigation file for field. I input field management file and for soil the same. So Lebanon initial condition. So I can do the run now. So for this year, we see there is a lot of stress and the yield was very low. The yield very low. We can see the rainfall during the season. So the, the main reason for low yield we had good rainfall, but most of the rainfall was at the beginning of the season. And toward uh, end of the season, we see little rainfall. Therefore, we can see the stress. The soil moisture content was reaching the wilting point. So even we have very good rainfall at the most of the season because the dry uh, moisture content, especially at the flowering stage, we get this low yield. We run aqua crop for several years, and I can show you here just the result for the same crop. OK. So. You can see this from 2005. Until 2013. And you see the yield. A lot of variation in yield. This 0.8 ton, this 1.8, 1.6. And here's the amount of rainfall. You can see in 2011, 2011, the amount of rainfall was 591 millimeter, and the yield was 4.5, very good yield. In 2012, we get also 590 millimeter, but the yield was less than less than one ton per hectare. Even we get the same amount 
of irrigation. Why the distribution? The rainfall distribution is different. And most of rainfall was maybe at the beginning, so we get water stress, which result in this low yield. So this using aquacraft for rain feed. Now how how we can use aquacraft to improve this yield to prevent to prevent this such low yield. We can use aquacraft to do scheduling for supplementary irrigation. And the way you can see my screen or sorry, we are currently seeing your presentation. We'll be back momentarily. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, just I will go to the model. So. I will use aquacrab and I guess we were unique in using our crab to uh, use uh, to schedule supplementary irrigation. Let me show you. So, but in this case, I have to do real time simulation. I have to input the weather data day by day. This is very important to know. So, I will run, but here I run day by day. So, I select here to have the run day by day. So, I run this for my uh, site at Tal Amara. I, while I'm running, I watch the moisture content. The dashed line, you can see this dashed line, this represents the wilting point. So I continue running and I, I can put here the rainfall just to see the rainfall event. So I'm running the water balance day by day. I select here one day. So See here, the moisture content increased because we have rainfall here. So you can see the moisture content here is even more than field capacity. So I do this running day by day, real time simulation. So look, my moisture content is still good. I don't need irrigation. OK, then my moisture content is reducing because I don't have rainfall. We get rainfall. So the moisture content increased. OK, when I am about 10 millimeter, just estimate above wilting point. I add irrigation here. OK, I add here irrigation 50 millimeter. So I add irrigation. So how I decide the timing from monitoring the moisture content when it is about 10 millimeter above wilting point, 
I put 50 millimeter. See, this shows the irrigation amount. I continue. Again, I am 10 millimeter above voting point, so I put 50 millimeter. I need another irrigation, maybe this last irrigation. Usually, let me put here 50. This was very dry year. Usually, we don't need for irrigation. So, here I needed for irrigation, but the yield was increased from 0 0.8 ton per hectare to 4.6 by adding 200 millimeter. We ran for several years. Let me show you the. Okay. So the, for rain feed, the average, the average was two ton from 2005 to 2013. For full irrigation, if I did full irrigation, it would be six ton. For supplementary irrigation, if I add either 100 in 2005, I needed 150. In 2006, I needed 100 only two irrigation. In 2008, 200 millimeter. So the average was 4.87. So it increased from two ton to 4.9 ton by adding either 100 or 150 millimeter. So this is very good use for aqua crop model. I guess and you don't see a lot of publication about using for supplementary irrigation, but it is very good tool you can use to use to decide when to add supplementary irrigation and we use this especially for rain feed crop like wheat. So this was my last slide and question is open for you. Are there any uh, questions from uh, the participants? I don't see any questions coming through. Uh, Dr. Waba, do you have any comments? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Ihab, uh, Dr. Madri. Uh, I think uh, as we we saw during uh, the four sessions, how uh, important is using this kind of uh, models, which will help us for the planning for how we can use and manage our water efficiency. efficiency. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I have one recommendation uh, uh, because four session is not enough to train uh, uh, our uh, young professional. And uh, it will be nice if we can consider in the near future to have uh, on-site uh, training at least for two weeks. And uh, because this kind of training will help for uh, uh, preparing and uh, and uh, building the capacity of our future leader, uh, especially in water management. Uh, as we, we we saw together during the, the three or four presentation, how it much is important to have uh, uh, our to collect our initial data uh, to be able to to calibrate and, and to use this kind of model. And of course, at the end, the most important how we can manage our our resources on the ground. Uh, at the end, we are looking forward to to save in irrigation water and to have more crop, uh, less crop. Uh, uh, this is just uh, my quick uh, comment. Uh, 
And of course, uh, I will not forget to, to thank ESCOA, uh, Dr. Marlin, uh, Dr. Ehab, uh, Dr. Carol, uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Rolla, of course, and for their kind support and hosting the four sessions. And they will be with us during the next uh, three session today and tomorrow also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want Thank to emphasize you. that um, this is a partnership uh, between uh, um, Aksad and Esqua under the RECAR initiative. Um, it looks like we finished about 10 minutes early. Um, we look forward to the next session, which will be on gender, which will be fantastic to have some maybe some fruitful discussions. And the next session will commence at 30, which is at about uh, 40 minutes. And once again, I invite all participants to participate in our survey. Their responses have been widely varied and very, very interesting. So I will share uh, those responses. Um, once I close the survey, the survey will be closed at, uh, at 2.15 our time. So that'll be about uh, a, a 20, 25 minutes. And I'll share the results before the start of the next session. So we look forward to seeing you again in about uh, 40 minutes. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.